I'm off to the post office on foot today, walking across our local heathland, which is very muddy at the moment, as you can see. I haven't walked this route in a few months and it feels good to be checking in on what the nature is up to. The scotch broom is starting to bud and the gorse is in full flower. I love all the dried and dormant plants that will disappear soon to be replaced with the, the fresh ones of spring. And of course the ever-present lichen. Even at the edges of the pavements en route into town there's plenty to see if, you, if you're looking. There's ivy, an old man's beard which I love, it's such a funny plant. And even violets creeping in, must have escaped from a garden somewhere. Now we've reached the town and I always love this old building. I keep meaning to draw it one day but I haven't got round to it yet. Right, let's get on with our trip to the post office. February and for the first time in ages I have just walked to the post office and back which I haven't done since oh, October or November last year so it was really nice and the weather although it's not warm has lost that kind of sting of winter uh, it doesn't look like we're even going to have snow this year hello cat someone was waiting at the back door for me when I got home do you want to say hello I get a lot of questions about our cat that's not our cat. So she is, as far as we know, according to our neighbours, she's about 14 years old. Her name is Mia and she lives next door where she is very much loved and adored by her owners who care for her greatly. Uh, but she comes here, I think, she likes human attention and fuss, which she gets a lot of from Phoebe. And she likes to get away for, where are you going? All right, weirdo. I was just telling them about you, but I didn't say you were weird. Hang on while I sort this out. She's on the chair now. Uh, yeah, so she lives next door and she comes here for a bit of peace and quiet from the dog and also for cuddles with Phoebe. And sometimes if she gets out of the kitchen, we generally don't let her out of the kitchen, because Lily is quite allergic to cats and if she stays in the kitchen where there's no soft furnishings she's not allowed on the table so of course that's where she is she sit, you're sitting on my show notes, I need those um, yeah so she, she's allowed in the kitchen sometimes she does get out and if she does she goes and sleeps on Phoebe's bed which Phoebe thinks is brilliant so that's the story of the cat that's not our cat what was I saying? anyway, yes, um, it's feeling very spring-like out there and there were a few little things starting to emerge in the sort of surrounding area so I tried to film as much of that as I could on my walk and it felt really good to get out there so I need to start planning our walks for the year. Uh, but right now I'm going to make a cup of tea and then I've got to go and do all of my description box links and everything for my podcast, my knitting and crochet podcast, which goes up on my other channel, Little Drops of Wonderful, tonight. I try to release my videos on that channel on a Thursday evening. So I'm going to have a cup of tea and do that, but before I do that, I'm going to go and give the chickens their morning seed allowance. Are you going to come with me? I 
I'm just putting some eggs in a couple of boxes for my mum and I thought I'd show you this. I got this in the sale on the omelette website and it prompts me to remind you that until the end of February I have a discount code which I'm putting on the screen now if, and I will put a link underneath to the video where I spoke all about this. I've got a discount code for you to get 10% off at omelette. They sell all kinds of pet related things, dogs, cats, hamsters, bunnies, and most importantly for me, chickens. And this was in the sale. It holds a whole load of eggs. I think it holds about 36 eggs. And it's a little egg helter skelter, so you can pop them here and then you always take the ones that have been laid the furthest date behind in history, <laughs> if that makes sense. And I wouldn't have got blue, except for the fact that the blue ones were in the sale and they were half price. And I do love a bargain. In fact, there's two more eggs to go and collect. So when we take them their seed, we will check for those. They should be all laid by now. I forgot to mention, just before I go and give the chickens their seed, who are getting increasingly angsty out there, that I stopped by the charity shop whilst I was in town. And I haven't been for a little browse in the charity shop for ages. And that particular charity shop always has really good books. And they had a whole load of Agatha Christie books. Somebody's obviously got rid of a huge collection. And I managed to find The Murder at the Vicarage, which is the very first Miss Marple book. And I've never read a Miss, I've never read any of the Miss Marple books. Um, and I like to read in the bath. So this was only two pounds and it's second hand. So I think that's gonna be my reading in the bath book because obviously it's quite an old book already and it was quite cheap. So I don't mind if it gets a little bit wet if I drop it. <laughs> so yeah, have you read Miss Marple? I, ne I never have, but I'm looking forward to it. I know my sister is a big Ag Agatha Christie fan, but she's more of a Poirot girl. I do love Poirot. Oh, hey, hey, they're already up here. Yeah. Peggy always stays down here. She can go and perch, but she chooses to. There you go, you have some there. Cloud, you're not coming out. <laughs> Look at this. If that's not a sign of spring, I don't know what is. Daffodils. Got some more crocuses coming up there as well. I have got my video scheduled, it's all ready to go up tonight and I've hoovered and dusted and done some tidying and cleaning and sorting. I've organised some bits to do with Phoebe's last year at primary school. Uh, as I was dusting, I was looking at my shelves and although I'm quite happy with how they are on the top one, two, three, four, these uh, bottom two need a bit of work. So I always had the philosophy when the kids were much younger that they should have an accessible shelf in the main living area where they could access um, books of all kinds at any time they wanted, um, which is why this is here. However, there are a couple of things that shouldn't be here. 
This is a candle I tend to have out in the winter, uh, the autumn and winter. So this has got to go away into storage until later in the year. This is beautiful when it's all lit up. My mother-in-law bought me this. You put a candle in it. Um, it gets very hot though, so it works better sometimes with battery operated um, lights. Uh, it was in the kitchen, but I moved it in here. I'm not sure where it belongs yet. But I don't think it belongs here. So we'll, we'll find a new home for that. The little collection of Russian dolls are going to remain. But a lot of these books, although they are old favourites, don't really get access much these days. So I think I'm going to have a bit of a sort through, get rid of any that we definitely don't want to keep, keep the precious ones. And then I'm going to rearrange a bit. Down here, this is a basket with toys that don't get played with anymore. And we've got a load of Lego card collecting things. A couple of atlases, they're going to stay. And I need to rearrange a bit because I've got two boxes of books upstairs that need a home. They need sorting and then the ones we keep need a home. So I think they're going to come on to here. So I don't know whether to start this job now or whether I will regret it. <laughs> I might sit down and do a bit of crochet or knitting and have a think. Just sort of show you closely. We've got all the Doctor, well, all of our favourite Doctor's Use books. Some of them are from when I was a child. This Horton Here's a Who was mine when I was little. And my favourite one when I was little, and this is the, the very one that I had. It's all a bit dog-eared now. Was If I Ran the Circus. I um, This was my favourite one. And I also used to really like the Cat's Quizzer. And my girls always like this, and sometimes they still get this out. Are you smarter than the cat in the hat? Where do peanut trees grow? China, Japan, USA? All the answers are in the back. Of course, peanuts don't grow on trees. And we've got a collection of Strictly Come Dancing annuals. It's a bit of a tradition that the girls get this at Christmas. So we've got quite a lot, but I think um, we don't really look at them that often unless we're trying to remember someone's name. But they're fun to have for now. Uh, and then their most favourite books, both of them growing up, were the Lauren Child books. Oh, look, and this one as well. I, look, I'm going to have to show you some books now. That Pesky Rat by Lauren Child. This was all part of a set that someone gave us as a gift and they have been read and read and read. Not by uh, Lauren Child, but Extra Yarn was a book recommended by lots of viewers on my other channel and I bought it for the girls and it's a beautiful story. Really, really sweet. It's by Matt Barnett, illustrated by John Classen. And the illustrations are wonderful. But this has got to be the number one favourite of all time book ever. <laughs> Hubert Horatio Bartle Bobton Trent. It's brilliant. It's about a young boy, Hubert Horatio Bartle Bobton Trent, uh, with very rich parents who are very sociable. And what happens when they spend all their money? It's very heartwarming and lovely. We have read this. I could probably recite this off by heart. What planet are you from, Clarice Bean? I like this. Not only because the uniform she wears is the same as the uniform my girls wore, but there's a bit in here. She talks about her family and her, her uncle. And... and maybe it's not in this one. Clarice Bean lets me. So there are a few phrases that have worked their way into family use. Oh. Here we go. So this is Robert Granger who lives next door. Grandad calls him shouting boy. <laughs> and we use that expression a lot. Let's just say we are familiar with having a shouting boy. <laughs> and the other one I always really liked was when she's practicing her uh, acrobatics and her gymnastics, which is balancing and smiling in tights. They're really good, these books. Uh, Beware of the Storybook Wolves is another excellent one. It reminds me a little bit of um, the Jasper Ford books where stories come to life. 
Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Book, same kind of thing. And this one, uh, my kids never really got into it, but I have read this cover to cover many times. Fungus the Bogeyman by Raymond Briggs, who I've spoken about many times before. Raymond Briggs obviously was the illustrator who did The Snowman. This was my book when I was little, and it's all about Fungus the Bogeyman. And he's just utterly disgusting. <laughs> He eats muck, he washes with muck, he has a bath in muck, he likes damp, mouldy, dark. It's just brilliant. And Raymond Briggs illustrations are second to none. And then this one's quite unusual. A Schoolgirls War um, was written by a woman who did a talk that my mum went to with, uh, I don't know, an, an, a retirement group. And they went to Maidstone Grammar School and basically there was an art teacher at Maidstone Grammar School who had, a, they found a sketchbook of her work and uh, they were able to piece together school life at Maidstone Grammar using the pictures that the art teacher had drawn. So she would draw images um, of the girls when they had to go down into the air raid shelters. She drew the interior of the air raid shelters. Um, she drew the girls when they were in there and when it leaked in the rain. She did it in different styles. And they just have all of these images. And so somebody who did the talk about it produced a book all about the images and the history of it. But I just, my mum actually bought this to give to me because she knew I would find the sketches and the illustrations so uh, fascinating. In September 1940. Precious books, all of them. It's Phoebe from school. It's still scarf weather. This was going to be a blanket, this, but I made it way too wide. It was getting boring, so I stopped it. It's now a scarf. And a very cheerful and warm scarf it is too. I'm really pleased with it. Phoebe's got her end of term disco tonight, so we're going to get her home, have a snack. And then she's going to get changed and I've got to take her back down to the school. i better double check what time it starts. And I'm hoping Dan will be back in time to pick her up because I want to have a nice hot bath and start reading my Miss Marple. Phoebe's home. She's going to get a snack. Do you want to give the chickens their vegetables? Yeah, can I have my sack first? Yeah, have your sack and then you can give them their vegetables and you can get ready for your disco. Right? Beautiful girl. Oh, let's go back so you can eat. I have to pick up Cloud now. I like getting my little cuddles for me. It's Cloud. Say hi, Cloud. What's that? You've got sweet corn on your beak. I've got sweet corn on you. Yeah. <laughs> Lilia's not feeling very well today. She's, it's her last day of term 
and she had an exam that she was quite determined to do. We've done two lateral flows with her in the last 24 hours and she definitely doesn't have COVID. I think she's just tired and she's got a bit of a nasty cold. Thankfully it's her last day of term so she doesn't have to do anything tomorrow but I'm going to make her favourite for dinner tonight because hands down this is her most favourite meal and that is macaroni cheese. Now everyone makes it differently so this is how I make my cheese sauce. So I am melting about 25 grams of salted butter. There we go. Now I'm going to add two tablespoons of plain flour. And spill a ton of it all over the cooker. And I'm going to mix that in. And just let that gently cook for about a minute. Now I've got about, well not about, I have exactly 300 mils of milk and I'm going to add it just a little bit at a time and mix it in. It goes all horrible and lumpy. I'm going to keep doing it a tiny bit at a time and eventually this will become a nice smooth thick sauce. Now when it gets to about this stage, I like to switch from my wooden spoon to my balloon whisk to start really getting it nice and smooth and getting all that flour into the milk. Right, I'm going to let that gently cook for a couple of minutes just to thicken a bit whilst I go and grate about 85-90 grams of cheddar cheese. Okay this has been cooking away for a couple of minutes and I'm going to turn the heat off and throw in my cheese. And that's it, just going to let the cheese melt through. I actually measured a bit too much cheese, I think there's about 95 grams here but the cheese sauce can't be too cheesy <laughs> so that's going to look really lumpy whilst the cheese melts and then I'm going to pop a lid on it and keep that until it's time to heat it up again later for Lydia's dinner there's there's enough here for her dinner and then I'll freeze some as well I find it freezes really well and then I defrost it and heat it gently whenever I want to use it again and she'll have this with a bit of broccoli on the side and she will be very happy. Comfort food for when she's feeling unwell. And a spoon for me to lick. Ready? Yeah. Take your head back a bit. Pins and needles, yeah. Back around. There we go. Come on, team ready. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Shoes. Bye. Shoes, shoes, shoes. I'm squeezed in between the clothes area with all the washing I did today and the door to the bedroom. In fact, I wonder if pushing the door will make any difference to the light. 
No, none at all. So sorry about the light and let's see if we can de-wobble the camera. Is that a little bit better? It might be. Uh, I've run a bath and I'm just waiting to get in there because when I came up to get in the bath, someone got in there to use the toilet. The joy of family living. Uh, so while I am waiting, I thought I would decide which book I'm going to read next. So I've nearly finished my book that I'm reading at the moment, which is Second Class Citizen by Bucci Emma Chita. Um, I've really enjoyed it. It's a really... Um, it's, only, it's less than 200 pages and I just decided to read it between Finishing the Strawberry Thief by Joanne Harris and the next bigger novel. I just wanted like a nice little small book and I've loved this book and I think I'm going to finish it tonight. Um, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I'm going to look to see if I can uh, read some more of her stuff because I've really enjoyed this sort of semi-autobiographical, I struggle with that word, autobiographical uh, tale. Um, and I would highly recommend it. It's about a Nigerian, young Nigerian woman in the 1960s or 70s who moves to the UK to be with her husband. They have young children and it's about what happens to her. She's a really resourceful young woman and um, yeah, it's a fascinating tale. Anyway, uh, I didn't come on to do a book review. I was just going to show you the three books that I'm choosing between for my next book. So I'm currently listening to Chocolat on audiobook and I've still got a few hours left of that. Uh, so one of my options was The Lollipop Shoes by Joanne Harris, which is the second book in the kind of Chocolat series. The Strawberry Thief that I just finished was the fourth one, but I didn't realise that when I got it. I loved it. Really enjoying Chocolat on audiobook, but I'm not going to listen, uh, start reading this until I've finished listening to Chocolat. So I'm going to put this one to one side. And then I thought I was going to choose between one of the two books I got at Christmas. So I'm either going to read A Year in Kronoberg, Sweden by Jeff Bunn, which is a tale um, of someone who spends a year living in Kronoberg. Uh, he's a Brit. Hello. Hello. Do you want to say hello? What are you doing? I'm just showing people my choice. I'm trying to choose my next book. Ooh. I was about to say my next choice is Happy Families. You definitely shouldn't read They Both Die in the End because it's really sad. Oh, yeah, come and tell everyone about it. Should I go get it? Go and grab it. Okay. Yeah, she's going to grab a book to tell you quickly about it. Um, or Happy... I think I'm going to read Happy Families next, basically, is what I was getting to. Happy Families by Ju Julie Marr. And, again, it is uh, loosely based on the author's real life, but it is a fiction. And I've just had this in my mind to read. Hello. Lily is going to tell you about a book. So a while ago, a lovely lady emailed me and Ooh. gave us some recommendations for everyone in the family. She was a librarian. <laughs> and one of the choices for, for Lilia was they, a book called They Both Die in the End. Who's it by? Adam Silvera. He's coming up with a part two this year. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> so it's called They Both Die in the End. And... Oh. Lily is not feeling very well. She's full of cold. Yeah. Do you want to say anything about it? Because you've loved this book. You've loved it and hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I've thrown it against the wall quite a oh, bit. Careful, you're kicking um, the cam. It's, it's very good. You look very short. Do you... <laughs> there we go. It's very good. Um, What's it about? Well, it's about two boys. It like flips the perspective. I like that in books. Uh, Mateo and Rufus. And they get like a call telling them they're going to die in 24 hours. And then it's about them meeting each other and dying. They spend their last day yeah, on they, Earth they, together. They, they so spend their it's last an alternative hours. kind of reality where yeah. everybody gets a phone call. Well, not everybody. Only if like your mum dies while she's giving birth to you. Oh, the, oh the, there's a reason. Yeah, because yeah. Rufus is an orphan. Okay, so and the, then Matteo just doesn't have a mum, and his dad's so in a coma. So there's some kind of reason some people will get a phone call at some point in their lives telling them they will die in 24 hours. Yes. And then there's an app where you can hook up with other people to spend your last 24 hours with. And that's so, where Matteo and Rufus met. So Matteo and Rufus spent. And is it is it a romantic story? Oh, I don't know. I can't wait. Do I don't know. I don't, um, you can't work um, it out. I can't work it out. But I think I think it's a slow burn. Um, I sh oh, yeah. And you're 15, aren't you? And you'll yeah. be 16 in the end of March. So would you? It's so good. Recommend <laughs> yes. that for your age. Yes. Or there anyone. 
if you if you have the nerve to I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it after you. It's really depressing. Because <laughs> she's spoken a lot about it at dinner, so I think I'm going to read it after yeah. you. Well, there we go. A little bit of book recommending for you at the end of the vlog. Can I go in the bath now? Yeah. All right. Oh. Okay, I'm going to end this here. Lilia's going to go and chill out and get over her cold. I'm going to go and sink into the bath and start reading my new bath book, my Agatha Christie, the first Miss Marple. I'm very excited. You okay? <laughs> I just fell up the stairs. That's really hurt my foot. Lilia falling down the stairs. Oh. See you in the next vlog. Oh.